What's going on folks, John here from kbmod.com and today we wanted to go over the build guides for August. Every month we do um, we do three build guides to give for separate budgets for people to get an idea of a baseline of what they should be looking for parts wise, performance wise for three separate budgets. We do an $800, a $1300 and a $1800 budget. So $8, $13, 18 and uh, this is just a general guideline. Things are always interchangeable and we'll give you an idea of the performance you can expect from each machine. And then we will compare the cost of a custom PC like this to building your own. So we'll go through the three configurations that we use. We use PC Part Picker. It's a great site. It allows you to select parts from every website on the web that sells PC components. Amazon, Newegg, NCIX, Super Blitz, Outlet PC all kinds of really great sites so we're gonna jump right into this and we'll do the three pre builds first and then we or the three custom builds and then we'll go back through and show you the price of these if you were to have these built for you by cyberpower PC so our first build is is very solid for seven hundred and eighty three dollars we're getting a i5 2500k um, with a 212 I have clocked mine to 5.2 gigahertz but it seems to be pretty standard for people to be able to get it to 4.5 gigahertz which is a pretty hefty overclock um, we use the hyper 212 for all of our coolers because it's the best air cooler on the market and it's 20 freaking dollars so whatever we have an entry level gigabyte motherboard it's a z68 uh, you want to make sure you're getting z68 or p67 if you're getting a k edition processor because you want to be able to overclock that's why you get a K-Edition processor. If you don't want to overclock your processor, if you're scared, just get a 2500. You know, it's <clears throat> the K means overclock it. We're looking at eight gigs of G-Skill Rip Jaws, uh, solid RAM. You know, RAM is RAM as long as it's of a certain speed. We have a one terabyte Seagate Barracuda internal hard drive, 7200 RPM, which is pretty standard as well. And as for the video card, we have a 7870 from AMD. We are big supporters of NVIDIA because they have awesome features, they have better drivers, they have adaptive vSync which is one of the best features ever. It basically it allows you to lock your frame rate in a game to your monitor's refresh rate without causing any input lag similar to vSync. But when it comes to budget cards AMD has always been a better option. So you can jump between a 570 or a 7870 for the uh, for the video card for the entry level build. That's That's up to you. Um, as for the case, we have a standard mid tower Cooler Master case, and the power supply is 500 watt Cooler Master as well. Now, for performance, the 7870 is going to get you some pretty solid performance. We're going to use Battlefield 3 as a benchmark because that's really the, the most difficult game to run that a lot of people play. Um, a 7870 will allow you to run Battlefield 3 on high settings. Between mid and high, you're not going to be able to run on Ultra on a 7870. Um, you can run it on Ultra, but you're not going to get that silky smooth 60 frames a second experience that. Is what makes PC gaming so great. And for the optical drive, doesn't really matter. Pick any old one. We picked a light on because it was the cheapest, and it'll do the job. For the mid-range build, for the $1,300 build, we went uh, went for for a little bit of an upgrade here. We have a 3770K processor. Again, K is for overclocking. If you want to overclock and get this, if you don't want to overclock and get the 3770S or something similar to that. Um, for the CPU cooler, we went with the 212 as always. Motherboard, we have a Fairly low-end MSI uh, LGA 1155 motherboard, and for RAM we have a another eight gigs of G-Skill Rip Jaws. Eight gigs is more than enough for what you're going to be doing as a gamer. And um, for storage, we upgraded. We have a one gig Crucial M4 solid state drive, 128 gigabytes. Uh, Crucial seems to be very reliable. Um, Crucial and Intel seem to be everybody's go-to's when it comes to solid state drives. They seem to have the longest lifespan and the least negative reviews that I've seen online. And we also have the one terabyte internal Seagate Barracuda 7200 RPM for storage. So you'll put your OS and the games that you play the most on your solid state and everything else will go on the regular internal hard drive. For the video card we have the GeForce GTX 670. This thing is a monster. People always ask us 670 or 680. The answer is always a 670 because the performance is equal or very very close to equal and it's a hundred dollar price difference between the cards. So always get the 670. There's no reason to get a 680. It is not a $100 jump in performance. It might be a $5 jump at best. And there's really no performance jump in a lot of games. For the case, we upgraded a little bit and went with an HAF 922 mid-tower case. This is all, you know, case is negotiable. That's up to you. And uh, the power supply is a 650-watt Corsair power supply. 
That's what's so great about this current generation of cards, the 7000 series from AMD and the 6 series from NVIDIA, is that they're very, very power efficient. Um, so you can upgrade to the newer generation of video cards on your power supply from last generation more than likely. If you had a 6970 or a 580 or something like that, one of the higher end single GPU cards back in the previous series, you can you can upgrade to the newer generation of cards on the same power supply, which is something that doesn't really happen very often. So it's it's really nice to see that they're wor working on you know increasing power efficiency and that in turn will make more people upgrade because a lot of people don't have $700 to upgrade, you know, spend $250 on a new power supply and $500 on a new video card. So it's a really good thing to see this current generation. And as for the optical drive, again, light on, it's cheap. Optical drive doesn't really matter. If you want Blu-ray, you can go for it, but PlayStation 3 is a great Blu-ray player. So... Onto the enthusiast build, which was $1,800 budget. This one, this this built a monster. This is what everybody on the site probably wishes that we had. Um, we have an i7 3770K again. It's a monster processor again. Case for overclocking. The 212. All of this stuff standard. That's what's going to be on you know the high end builds for a while because it's going to be a while before we see better CPUs. And for the motherboard, we have AS Rock uh, Z77 Extreme 4. Now people might question this. AS Rock not too long ago wasn't a very wasn't very highly touted but they've really made a lot of steps forward and they've added awesome features to their motherboard and the aesthetics on their motherboards are second to none like they have some really awesome looking motherboards so if you're if you're interested in having you know all of the features that you need USB 3.0 SATA 6 all of that good stuff and you like cosmetics AS Rock's probably the way to go they have motherboards that'll match any color scheme you want really and that that's that's great. It's really nice to see a new company like AS Rock stepping into the fold to compete with the Gigabytes, the MSIs, the ASUS, all of these other companies, and they're doing a great job of it. As for RAM, we took a step up and went with 16 gigs. Again, this is negotiable as well. You don't really need 16 gigs, but if you're spending this much on a PC, why not spend an extra $30 to get double the RAM? As for storage, we have another crucial M4 solid state and another Seagate 120 or <laughs> Seagate 7200 RPM internal. And as for the video cards, this is this is the big boy right here. We have two GeForce GTX 670s. Um, your performance is going to be like a single GTX 670 will run Battlefield 3 at 60 frames a second on ultra settings. It'll be silky smooth and gorgeous. And two of these is just going to dookie all over the game. And that that's fantastic. You, two 670s is going to last you quite a while when it comes to performance in the hardest to run games. Like Crisis 3, you'll probably be able to run very, very well on two 670s, and you probably have another, you'll be able to skip the next generation of cards on two 670s, which is something that's that's really nice, is knowing that whenever you build your rig, you're spending a ton of money, but you know you're going to be able to skip the next generation, and that's what two 670s is going to allow you to do. As for the case, we went with an NZXT Phantom White, and I will show you this after we go through the rest of this because this case is gorgeous. It's like a, it's very Star Wars like, and the power supply again. Like I said, that this this generation is very power efficient. You can run two 670s on a 750 watt power supply safely and comfortably, with a little room for, little little overhead room too, which is which is awesome. And again, DVD drive doesn't really matter. So we'll look at this case just because I just because it looks so sexy. We want to look at this. Look at that thing. That is just beautiful, and I want it. I want that now. So we're gonna go ahead and um, look over these pre-built rigs of the same same similar specifications. On pre-built sites, you don't really have the option to use the exact same parts as you would if you were custom building because they don't offer them. So for the entry level build, which was under eight hundred dollars for us. You're looking at $1,082. Um, this is not factoring in shipping costs, which could be up to $100 or $150. So you could be looking at spending potentially $1,200 on the rig that was under $800 to build yourself. We highly encourage you to learn to build yourself. It is not difficult, and it's, it's a very valuable skill because if your computer breaks, you need to fix it. It's going to save you a lot of money from instead of taking it to Geek Squad at Best Buy and them charging you $300 to mount a motherboard, you can do it yourself in 25 minutes, which is great. So for the entry level build, which was under $1,300 for us, or not for the entry, for the mid middle of the road build, you're looking at $1,582, factor in another $100 to $150 on shipping. You could be looking at $1,700. So again, this is about $400 more to have it built for you.
We'll move on to the extreme build, and this one has a big jump. This one's pretty big. So two 670s, a 3770K, 16 gigs of RAM, solid state, and a, you know, one terabyte internal. You're looking at $2,331. So that is a $700 jump in price, roughly, from building it yourself to having it built for you. And that's just not good. We don't want that. So that, that, that should be a, a big wake-up call to you guys who had been considering building yourself and getting it built for you because you don't want to take the risk. If you're getting a high-end machine, you're going to be looking at about $700 difference. There, there are other sites. There's iBuyPower, but I, I've always used CyberPower PC just because it's the easiest. So I hope this gave you guys a wake-up call and you know, showed you what we were working with this month. Um, all of these rigs will run every game that you want to play at solid frames, solid graphic settings, solid resolutions. HD resolutions won't be a problem for any of these any of these rigs. So we're going to be doing this every month, assuming that parts change at all, because technology is so good right now that a lot of these parts are sticking for a long time. Like the 2500K has been fantastic for a while now. You have, you know, the Ivy Bridge CPUs that are fantastic for the higher end build. So it's really, it's really a good time to, to pick up PC gaming. So we'll be, we'll be doing some more videos like this, and we'll have some more videos up on the channel later on this week. Gaming related, though, not, not tutorial related or build guide related. Be sure to check out the site at kbmod.com. Follow us on Twitter at kbmodgaming and like us on Facebook. Um, hope you guys enjoyed, and we'll see you shortly.